Welcome to Just a Minute. Hello, uh, my name is Nicholas Parsons. And as the minute waltz fades away, it's my huge pleasure to welcome you to this special edition of Just a Minute from the BBC Television Centre. This year marks the 45th anniversary of Just a Minute. And to celebrate over four and a half decades of radio success, they finally decided to let us deviate our way onto your television screens. So without further ado, please welcome to the show four talented performers. And they are, seated on my right, Paul Merton and Tony Hawkes, and seated on my left, Sue Perkins and Graham Norton. Please welcome all four of them! <laughs> I ask each player in turn to speak on a subject that I give them, and they will try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. And the other three can challenge whenever they wish, and if I uphold their challenge, they gain a point. And if not, the person speaking gains a point and keeps the subject. We go on like that until the whistle goes, which tells us that 60 seconds is up. And by the way, they can repeat the subject on the card. Graham, would you take the first subject? Yes. Right. Oh, it's a really topical subject, really, of what I've been talking to you about. It's my 45th birthday. So will you tell us something about that? I thought that would get a reaction, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can't believe I am 45. <laughs> <laughs> the show is 45, but you're not, Graham. So, my 45th birthday... <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get on the subject of ages. <laughs> Especially with me around. <laughs> so, my 45th birthday, Graham, you have 60 seconds as usual, and your time starts now. I remember my 45th birthday well. Because it strikes me, when you're six, the highlight of a birthday is the candles on the cake and the bumps. But by the time you're 45, that just means the fire brigade will be called out and there's probably a visit to A&E. <laughs> I wish I could say that my 45th birthday was spent drowning in a jacuzzi with close showbiz chums like TV's Tim Finn. Vincent, that woman with the big <laughs> earrings from EastEnders. But no, it was... Sue, you've challenged. That deviation, I don't think Tim Vincent is that woman from EastEnders with the big <laughs> earrings. <laughs> At least, I mean, he may well have, I don't know, deviated something. It was a list. It I was a see. list. The cover was not apparent, Graham. No, I, think what it, I think what Graham was doing, he was actually sort of saying that there are, he's got more than one friend. He was being very cocky, in fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sue, so, so I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, I and love so you. <laughs> <laughs> Which means you have a point for a correct challenge. You take over the subject. There are 30 seconds still left, and your time starts now. My 45th birthday is so... Graham. Surely not, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't... It's very... There was no one going. Oh, no, no, surely not. There was no one going. Gentlemen. No. You can't remember. Well, I mean, she may well be about to talk about the future of yes. I mean, Oh, yes. yes. She yes. may be about to say, is coming up in eight years' time. Yeah, but I didn't want to hear about it. Fifteen! Well, Graham, let's not get Graham. stupid about it. I mean, you know. <laughs> Graham, what I'll do is give you a bonus point for chivalry. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> But Sue was interrupted, so she gets a point for that. She keeps the subject. There are 28 seconds still available. My 45th birthday starting now. My 45th birthday is so far away in time that worlds may rise and fall. <laughs> Civilise it. Uh, Paul's challenge. Well, surely you can remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it can't have been that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> just said it in the midst of time. Yeah, in the future. Oh, I didn't make that clear. Can I just say you're looking lovely tonight? Point for chivalry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's it. All right, give you a point for chivalry and leave it with Sue. It's easy as that. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> all right, Sue, they decide they're all going to be chivalrous. You keep the subject and you have 24 seconds. My 45th birthday starting now. I'm 32 plus VAT, so for me it's a long <laughs> time away. But I look forward to the invitation from Graham, where I can share showbiz fun and jollity in a filled jacuzzi stuffed with Tim Vincent and that bird off EastEnders with the enormous <laughs> ear. Who may or may not be the same person, who can possibly tell? A uh, poor new challenge. Oh, do we have repetition of person? Yes. And you've got in with seven seconds to go, mm. and your time starts now. I can well remember the guest list at my 45th birthday. In fact, when I look around the audience now, I can see several familiar faces who were there. <laughs> uh, 
In this game, whoever is speaking when the whistle goes gains an extra point. On this occasion, it was Paul Merton. So, Paul, you're in the lead at the end of the first round. Lovely. It's not surprising, because very few points have been scored. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's move on. Let's take the next subject. And, uh, Sue, oh, we'd like you to take the next one. Oh, God, it's embarrassing now when I tell you what it is. <laughs> the worst smell in the world. <laughs> Sue, so, will you try and tell us something about that subject in this game, starting now? A Northern Line tube carriage at the height of summer. A sweltering afternoon at rush hour, with head embedded in moist armpits of a commuter, <laughs> with the heady fog of crotch and tobacco emanating from the streets below. What could... She's still talking about her 45th birthday party. <laughs> Tony, oh, I, I don't, don't think... Yes. Can I just say how magnificent she looks, just in case... It <laughs> could be a point going for chivalry, I don't yeah. know. But as the audience enjoyed what you said so much and gave you even a round of applause, Thank I you. will give you a bonus point Thank for that. You. But Sue was interrupted, so she gets a point, keeps the subject, there are 42 seconds available, and your time starts now. What could add to that olfactory journey but the sound of polystyrene squeaking and suddenly fried chicken emerging? Oh, if only we knew the special ingredients that go into that incredible smell bomb that gets detonated every time one attempts to make a journey, say, from Euston in the centre of town. Graham, your challenge. Repetitive journey. Oh. Yes. Yes. On the northern was line. Was it really? Was it really? <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, you are good. <laughs> you, you looked as if you were trying chancing your arm on that, but no, it was no, right. No, it no. is correct. No. It is correct. Yeah, yeah no. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have yeah. a correct yeah. chance. Yeah, Sky plus all you want. Mm -hmm. She said it twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Graham, another point to you for a correct challenge. And there are 23 seconds still available, and your time starts now. A hand-knitted jumper that's been caught in the rain. <laughs> oh, the whiff of wet dog off that. <laughs> I did think that was the worst smell in the world until I got some canine friends and... Ooh! They can... <laughs> so you've challenged. Repetition of ooh! <laughs> <laughs> No, let's be fair, Sue. I mean, that O was a long one. Yeah. Different spelling. Five O's in the first yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> Nine in the second yeah. one. Yeah. 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 What yeah. Tony said. Yeah. 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 yeah, what Tony said, yeah. yeah. So, I gave you the benefit of the doubt last time. Graham gets the benefit of the doubt now. Right, Keeps okay. the subject. Another point to you, Graham. Eight seconds still available, starting now. Pet owners will know all too well the fearsome woof-woof fart. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I see to... what I've done there. <laughs> Paul, your challenge. Oh, repetition of woof. Yes, that's <laughs> They laugh as if they hadn't spotted it. Right. But, Paul, well spotted yourself. You have a point. You have the subject. You have three seconds. And your time starts oh, now. Rotten flesh and sewage, so a zombie with diarrhoea, for me, would be the worst smell <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Paul Merton was then speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point for doing so, and he has increased his lead at the end of that round. And, uh, Tony, will you begin the next round? Oh, a lovely historical subject. William the Conqueror. Tell us something about William the Conqueror in this game, starting now. William the Conqueror wasn't always called William the Conqueror. For a while, he was named William the Bastard. <laughs> Presumably this because of his illegitimate birth. <laughs> <laughs> What sort of birth did he have? <laughs> An illegitimate. Well, his What's that with genuine name? flowers? Yeah, What's happened there? His, his mother was Lily. Yes, <laughs> and his father was Jitimate. Oh, I see. I've withdrawn my challenge. Yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> she, she married Mr. Jitimate. <laughs> An um, illegitimate birth, obvious. Yeah. Tony, it, it was uh, what we interpret as hesitation yes. because it, you did stumble over the words. So, Paul, another point to you, and uh, you have 48 seconds. You tell us something about William the Conqueror starting now. I know nothing about William the Conqueror. <laughs> Deviation. Why? Because he doesn't know anything about William the Conqueror. <laughs> but the point is, in this game, whether you know anything about the subject or not, you've still got to try and keep going without hesitation, repetition or deviation. If so, if it doesn't matter. Oh, OK. 
It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's up to him to try and bluff. I'm certainly looking forward to the next minute. Though. Exactly. <laughs> So, Paul, you've got another point. Yes. And you have 48 seconds. William the Conqueror, starting now. From William's early childhood, people... <laughs> um, Tony, you challenged. I don't believe him. No. <laughs> he doesn't know anything, I'm not. I'm not I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> he hasn't established anything Obviously, he had an early childhood. He wasn't born middle-aged. <laughs> <laughs> like some of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> No, I think you justified the fact that it was an incorrect challenge, yeah. Paul. Oh, right. Another point to you, 46 seconds, starting now. William the Conqueror strode into his mother's house and demanded... <laughs> uh, Sue, you challenged. Is he still young? Because striding. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, quite, you know, it's an emphatic thing for a toddler to do. I'm just not <laughs> buying it. I'm just yeah. not buying it, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> I think a toddler sometimes. I'm also strike. trying to get Paul the maximum amount of points for knowing nothing about I'm, I'm, I'm doing better on this subject. I know nothing about it than any subject I've had all day. <laughs> so you've got another point for an incorrect challenge, oh, good. Paul. And 43 seconds, starting now. Everybody in the neighbourhood hated William the Conqueror. They despised the fact that he used to go off Conqueror and not send his mummy. Poor mother wouldn't send her. Uh, grand challenge. We're British to mummy. Yes, but I said mother before, no, 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 no. and then I said mother after you buzzed. Well, the good, good thing, I've given you a point. I, I yeah. Just to, uh, yeah, that was my main aim. Yeah. <laughs> so, Paul, you've got another point, increasing indeed. You've still got 35 seconds. How many seconds? 35 Hundred seconds. <laughs> to talk about something about which you know nothing. Yeah. Time starting now. I've got a cat called William the Conqueror. He's a lovely little creature. He's part Moggy and another part of him. He likes two parts. Oh, right. <laughs> Sue, you challenge first. Uh, that was a part. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Well done. Part. So, Sue, you have the subject now. <laughs> William the Conqueror, tell us something about it. 30 seconds to go, starting now. Uh, William the Conqueror was a Duke of Normandy, got bored and thought, I'll have a bit of England. Harold was ruling it at the time, dubious lineage, but the problem was Edward the Confessor hadn't got any kids. So he struck. She knows too much about William. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Tony, this has happened before. You made a joke and you got a round of applause. I always incline to give bonus points yeah. for that. So yeah. you're you're winning on bonus points. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, so you were interrupted, uh, Sue, so you get another point for that. And there are 20 seconds still available. William the Conqueror, starting now. William the Conqueror toddles over to the UK and ends up in Hastings. Lovely seaside resort, but he aims to go to battle because it's the best place for a fight in that it doesn't need to be renamed That's the annoying <laughs> thing about locations. <laughs> you have a massive fight there and then uh, Graham challenged. We're going to fight. Yes. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. right <laughs> Graham it was a correct challenge and you've got him with three seconds to go <sighs> William the Conqueror, with you, Graham, starting now. Looking at this erudite audience, I realise I mustn't bore you with the details. <laughs> so, Graham Norton was then speaking as a whistle when again, that extra point for doing so. At the end of the round, Paul Merton is still in the lead, and uh, Sue Perkins and Graham Norton are equal in second place, and then uh, Tony's bringing up the rear with all his bonus points. Uh, <laughs> Paul, we'd like you to begin the next round. Beekeeping. <laughs> Can you tell us something about beekeeping in this game, starting now? Due to the terrible ecological climate that we now live in, bees are actually missing out on existence. We have to, all of us, encourage to keep our... Oh, God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so five challenge. mistakes in Hesitation. there. Hesitation. Yes, indeed yeah, it was. <laughs> yes. Right, uh, there are 51 seconds still available. Sue, you tell us something about beekeeping, starting now. Bees are stoners. They love a bit of a smoke to calm them down. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing signifies... Uh, Graham's turn. This is inappropriate, I feel. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> it's a celebration of just a yeah. minute, and I, I don't think this should be in the They're mellow, sure. mellow bees. We shouldn't be encouraging insects to break the law, should we? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know what your challenge was, Graham. It, 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 I was just stopping it. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it was more of an intervention. I thing. don't think yes. it was a legitimate challenge. Okay. So Sue keeps program. the subject. <laughs> <laughs> um, you 
saw me, I tried to stop this. <laughs> The darling boys in a huff. <laughs> <laughs> Graham, because they enjoyed your reaction, I'm going to give you a bonus point. Now, was that that hard? Was yeah. that that hard? <laughs> Thank you. But Sue was interrupted, so she keeps the subject. Can Sue. I just say, Sue, you're looking particularly beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Chivalry. Yeah. Yeah. Chivalry. <coughs> We're going to all give her a bonus point, aren't we? Right, now, uh, Graham, you've got your bonus point. Sue, you've got the subject. 43 seconds, starting now. Beekeeping is important because, as Paul said, they are dying out due to monoculture. Agriculture only providing a single crop for us to eat. Bees thrive on diversity. They need to eat freely. Uh, Graham Challenge. I'm so bored. <laughs> <laughs> Now you don't like the serious bees. So what kind of bees you like? Mono, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Are we allowed to challenge for boring? <laughs> <laughs> you can challenge for anything you like. It's up to me to decide whether you get a point or not. Oh, really? So as soon as she was interrupted, she has a point for that, oh, and his subject is still <laughs> beekeeping, and there are 29 seconds starting now. I kept bees for about 15 minutes, had to wear a spacesuit, got badly stung, because one little blighter got underneath the enormous cowl that I was wearing. Not of a Simon variety, merely a sort of headgear that was going to keep them away from me. They can really nip, what with that massive, great pointy thing that comes out of their backside. So I retreated, because other hobbies are, frankly, safer. Uh, to all challenge. They don't really nip. Do they bees? No, they, they don't. They sting. They, don't they sting. Nip. They inject something into you. Do yes. they? Yes. Yes. And... <laughs> you say they don't have enormous canine teeth? No, no. They inject something <laughs> into it, you. Um, oh. and, and You're they... thinking of Daxons. Yes. yes. <laughs> Daxons and bees. Yeah. Yes. And, and does it really come out of their backside? Yeah, it was sort of. Well, no, I feel. No, it was quite far back, you but see, not I, the backside. I was going to pick them up on that, but I was too shy. Yes. Yeah, really. <laughs> Thorax prong, is that what you'd have... Yes. Thought? I yes. would have said thorax prong, yeah. and I got the subject. Wasn't he one of Norway's biggest <laughs> film was, stars? Was. <laughs> he's filmed oh. yeah. Wonderful actor. Wonderful. Paul, you had a correct challenge, because they don't sting, they inject. And there are nine seconds available, starting now. Thorax prong was sitting in his dressing room. He was about to appear in the swarm. Definitely a B-movie. He looked at his fellow co-stars. Dreadful little insects, he said to himself. I've got a great one, it's like the same time. So, Paul Merton was then speaking as the whistle went, gained that extra point. So, what have we known? Graham, it's your turn to begin again. Oh, yes, it's almost what you did just then. Throwing a tantrum. <laughs> <laughs> So, will you tell us something about throwing a tantrum in this game, starting now? Some days I so long to have the emotional freedom of a three-year-old child to have myself prostate in a supermarket. Uh, supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> prostate? Yes, yes, yes. I do. <laughs> I don't know that they do them in Tesco's. <laughs> <laughs> it's their finest range. <laughs> <laughs> Every little helps. <laughs> No, we should all have our prostate seen to occasionally. I and, don't need uh, my <laughs> So you challenge, and he was correct, and there are 50 seconds available still, throwing a tantrum, starting now. What you might not know about me is that I am the Mariah Carey of factual entertainment, and unless <laughs> there is a huge collection of freshly born puppies in my dressing room, and only blue M&Ms, I will have... Um, no. Tony Challenge. M&Ms. Uh, yes, I was going to say repetition of M, M &Ms. but um, as Paul has pointed out, thankfully, mm. um, <laughs> um, she said M the first time, mm. and M's the second time. So what I'm going to try and do is cleverly work a bonus point <laughs> out of this by saying how magnificent you're looking. <laughs> well, that was not what you said before you came on. <laughs> no, 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 no. Is he still going? You said. <laughs> I'm trying to take a point away from you, Paul. <laughs> well, I'll have it. You know, no. <laughs> I suppose if you flatter the chairman, you're entitled to a bonus point, don't you think? Yes. 
you got it then. Ah. But it was an incorrect challenge, Sue, so you still have the subject. Throwing a tantrum, 39 seconds, starting now. The worst tantrum I ever did see was Nicholas Parsons before a radio recording of Just a Minute. There he was in his thong, screeching <laughs> like a barn owl for all to hear because somebody hadn't put fresh roses in the dressing room. Oh. Well, he turned. Uh, 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 who's challenged? Tell me, me, yes. me. I think there was a dressing room before with fresh puppies in the dressing it room. Was, but it was deviation anyway. Yeah, so... <laughs> I know, Tony, you've got the subject, and you have throwing a tantrum, 24 seconds, starting now. You cannot be serious! We can all remember these amazing tantrums of John McEnroe during Wimbledon and how the crowd were delighted by them in some sort of perverse way. Although this behaviour was clearly appalling, they loved it and they bemoaned the fact that the tennis people today do not carry on with such vigour and passion. They would like to see more of it. Oh. Oh. So Tony Hawks was then speaker of the whistle went, and with great passion he went up to that moment and gained that extra point for doing so, and he's still in fourth place. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> two. Oh, what an interesting subject. My first celebrity crush. <laughs> That's the noise we used to hear when people said in tonight's star prize. <laughs> <laughs> right, Sue, uh, your turn to begin. I've got first celebrity crush, 60 seconds as usual, starting now. My first rather improbable celebrity crush was Jan Michael Vincent from Cult Mess Airwolf. What an extraordinary <laughs> voice, which I thought at the time reeked of sexual allure and promise, but in fact, he probably had laryngitis. It was as if his tonsils had been grated by a parmesan shaver. And when he took off his spectacular <laughs> aviator sunglasses, his eyes resembled raisins in a half-baked sponge. And yet, something <laughs> about him appealed to my teenage self. The way he sat, pigeon chest... Tony, you challenge. I think there may be a repetition of way. Yes, the way he sat and the way he did this, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Well, Mr. Tony. <laughs> He's on his way now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have 27 seconds, uh, Tony. My first celebrity crush starting now. My first celebrity crush was when Luciano Pavarotti fell on me in a party. <laughs> it was absolutely <laughs> terrible. I was underneath him for quite some time, hospitalised for four weeks, tried to bring a court case against him. He wasn't having any of it. He had all the best lawyers in Italy, and you know how corrupt some of them can be. Mm. <laughs> the party we had afterwards. So... Graham, you challenge. A repetition of party. Yes. Yes. He fell on you when they were at a party. Ah, yes, yes. yes. Repetition of the world. <laughs> so, Graham, you cleverly got him with six seconds to go. Okay. Starting now. My first celebrity crush was David Cassidy. That was fine, <laughs> but then I met him. Oh! <laughs> On the whistle, do we? No. we? How bad was it? We no, want to hear no, more. That's all you need to know. Oh. Yeah. Just oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Graham Norton was then speaking as the whistle went, and uh, Graham, it's your turn to begin. Oh. Is it tea time? <laughs> <laughs> that particular little tinkle tells me that we have one more round to go. Let me give you the situation as we move into the final round. In ascending order, Graham is trailing Tony by two points. And he's training Sue by two points, and Sue is training Paul by two points. So that is the situation in ascending order. And Graham, it's back with you to begin. Everything to play for. <laughs> <laughs> and the subject, a lovely one, Venice. So tell us something about Venice in this game, starting now. Venice is the city of romance. So vital is that town to lovers, and so drawn are they um, Tony Challenge. Oh, were there two so's quite close together? Little tiny words. <laughs> <laughs> I breathed yeah. several mm. times during it as well. I, 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 everything I played for, it was dog eat dog. It I'm is. coming last! <laughs> <laughs> Kick me while I'm down. <laughs> Well, it was a correct challenge, no. so maybe I should give it to him, yes. unless you want to give it back to him. No, no, it's fine. Have Can it? I just mm. say, Nicholas, how youthful, handsome. <laughs> <laughs> 
charming and sophisticated you're appearing tonight. It's a real joy to be sat next to you. And the, the, is that cologne you're wearing or just a natural <laughs> uber-fertile man mask that's emanating? <laughs> so you need more than one bonus point to win. <laughs> Must might have given me two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me a bonus point. <laughs> Tony, a clever listening from you. Correct challenge, uh, Venice, and 51 seconds starting now. I've heard it said that Venice is actually sinking, unlike the Italian economy, which is doing terrifically well, I believe. <laughs> I have gone... Graham, you challenge. Uh, yes, I did. Um, <laughs> the Italian economy. It was deviation yeah. from yes, sense. Yes, yes. Listen, Graham, that was a correct challenge, and we're very quick on that one, I must say. And uh, <laughs> two seconds starting now. A lot of people wonder, how did they build Venice? Well, happily, I've talked to Nicholas. He was there when it happened. <laughs> me how they put down rushes and mats and then spat on them and <laughs> then they got some mud so you've changed well he's both hesitating there and also deviating why uh, well i don't believe that venice was built on a series of rush mats no. on the water because matting's well, quite no, man, the nodding and yeah. how old he <laughs> <laughs> No, so I give you the benefit of the doubt, Sue. Venice is with you. 26 seconds starting now. Ah, Venice. Indeed, the city of the true romantic, which is why I only did a day trip and then went on to somewhere like Milan. Heavy, hardcore, industrial and loveless. But when I was there, I was delighted to see the Vaporetto, the water taxi that transport you from Marco Polo Airport to the heart of that great city, where you can stare... Tony Chance. I think she said city before. Yes, you did. Yeah, repetition of city. Yes. Started yes. off with city. Yeah. Yes, you did. Be city. And so, Tony, you got back in with a subject which probably pleases you very much. And you have only six seconds to go, starting now. I went there once many years ago. What a romantic <laughs> occasion. Lost my virginity. Terrific evening it was. <laughs> People came past Sue, looking through Sue, the... Minute, oh, no, I haven't finished. I want to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, I was there and it was Rotterdam, not Venice. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so an incorrect challenge and Tony's got one second left on Venice, starting now. Lulu said to me once, don't... <laughs> So it now remains for me to give you the final score in this exciting edition of Just a Minute. Graham Norton, who's given such wonderful value, and we love him dearly on the show, he only just finished in second place. He was three points behind three people who are equal in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> so it couldn't be fairer than that. Paul Norton, Tony Horton, to the three equal winners. I love it when it works out as fair as that. So we do hope you've enjoyed this edition of Just a Minute. From us, goodbye. And don't forget, be with us the next time we play Just a Minute! Yeah! Yeah! From the team that brought you Just a Minute, it's all about telling lies on Radio 4 now in a brand new series of The Unbelievable Truth. Whereas here on BBC Two, it's about defeating the eggheads with £2,000 at stake for today's challenges.